Happy New Year! I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season and I hope you get to spend some time with the people you love, with your friends, your family, maybe get a little bit of a break from work or de-stress a little bit. To start off the year right, I'm going to show you my favorite plugins of last year. Some of them were released in 2021, some of them are older, but all of them are great. My name is Matt Flank, let's get started. So for most of the plugins that I will be talking about, I have already made a video about them. And if that's the case, a banner will pop up with a link to the correct video. Okay, so let's start off by talking about some instruments. So probably my most used plugin of 2021 has got to be this one. Serum is one of my all-time favorite plugins. It's incredibly versatile. I can make anything from soundscapes to drums to crazy synthesizers. It's used in a lot of popular songs and popular music. I can use it to play live pretty much anything that I ever want to do with it. But there is a very special honorable mention for this plugin, which has got to be Vital. So in case you haven't heard about Vital, this is what it looks like. And as you can see, it looks really similar to Serum. And that is because it is. It is really similar. And that's what makes it special, because this plugin is free and Serum is, anywhere, is somewhere around 150 euros. This plugin is made by Matt Title, I believe. And a couple years ago, he had a plugin called Helm, which you will see on your screen right now. If I didn't already have Serum, I would be using this one all the time. I have a tutorial about this plugin. It is linked on your screen right now or in the description. But overall, the sound of this plugin is just really great. So let's take a listen to some of the presets. One of my favorites is a preset by Mr. Bill. If you don't know Mr. Bill, I will link his channel down below. He's an incredible producer that also uses Ableton and he has some great tutorials about some very advanced stuff. His preset Super Nice Plug is probably one of my favorites that are in the presets of Vital. So let's take a listen. Okay, so my next favorite instrument plugin, it is a new plugin from last year and it is called Drums by a company called UJam. I made a tutorial, I made a video about this plugin when it first got released and that video did really well. People loved this plugin and it's pretty incredible what you can do with some of the presets. So we're gonna take a random one, let's take cinematic, let's go for, let's choose terminators, sounds interesting. Pretty much this plugin is used for orchestral drums. If you want to use this plugin, Drums by UGEM, there is a link in the description for you to check out the product page and there is a 30 day free trial for you to experiment with this plugin without paying for it in advance. And now I want to talk about some effects. Can you guess what my most used effect is of last year? And it is EQ8 in Ableton. I think I used this effect pretty much on every track of every song that I made. The plugin is a very simple EQ, does what it needs to do, supports mid-side and left-right processing. And recently Ableton shared a video by, by a guy that explains how to make EQ8 a dynamic parallel EQ. I will link that video on your screen right now or you can watch it by clicking the link in the description. Maybe I will do a similar tutorial because this really inspires me and I think as much people need to know about this as possible because it is a really cool trick. Next up, my favorite reverb plugin, which has to be Realm by Native Instruments. I've used this on a lot of my tracks this year, and especially on strings, I think the airy preset sounds really cool. Usually I leave it at a stock preset, which I think sounds really, really good. It has this airy feel as the name implies. Um, let's actually load up some strings and see how it sounds. So next up, another effect plugin, it's a compressor, my favorite plugin, I bought this two years ago, it is MJUC by Klanghelm. I had been using the free version of this plugin for quite some time, and I think it sounds really well. 
So the way that MJUC differs from Ableton's stock compressor is that this emulates a variable tube compressor. A variable tube compressor pretty much has the characteristic of giving a really warm sound to it. I like to use this on pads, on vocals, sometimes on synthesizers as well. Uh, on drums I don't like it as much, I prefer the stock Ableton compressor for drums, but still this plugin gives some really nice sound. I also like to use this on my mix bus. There is three different versions, Mark 1, Mark 2 and Mark 3, which all have a little bit of a different sound. I feel like this one has the more, the more general sound, MK2 has a little bit of a warmer sound, a little bit more analog feeling, and this one is a little bit colder, a little bit lighter as well. I actually didn't notice for, for a couple of months when I had this plugin that you could expand the bottom of it to e reveal even more settings, to adjust the timbre, the drive, sidechain frequency, which is basically a frequency below which the plugin will not work, and then a mix. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how this sounds by using an analog pad that I made myself. It sounds like this. Add the compression, I'm gonna use Mark II because I want to make it a bit warmer. So my next favorite plugin, even though I have already talked about how much I love using EQ8, which is Ableton stock EQ, is also an EQ. It's actually two EQs. One being Coffee Pun and two being Titanium Bass Start. Both plugins are by the same company, which is Acoustica Audio. Jeez, that took me a while. And I like to use those two EQs for two very specific reasons. So first let's talk about Coffee Pun. Actually both of these plugins are emulators of analog EQs, but I specifically like to use Coffee Pun to boost some of the high frequencies. So I will usually set this knob to a frequency around 3 kHz, 4 or 6 kHz, I usually don't go any higher. And I will make it a shelf filter and just turn up the gain by anything between 0 and 2 decibels. I actually don't use those buttons at all, but those are to cut some of the low frequencies or boost some of the low frequencies. Speaking about boosting low frequencies, that is what I use Titanium Bass Start for which is a plugin that is made specifically to boost some of the low frequencies from 20, 30, 60 to 100 Hz. We have the boost knob which boosts the frequencies and then we can add them, I don't know. I usually like to turn up the boost a tiny bit and then the add them to like 2 or 3 and this gives my bass a really really warm and thick sound basically without overwhelming it in the entirety of the song in, in, the, in the mix. I want to talk about one of my favorite distortion plugins, which is Decapitator by Sound Toys. And Sound Toys in general makes some really great plugins. I especially like Decapitator and Little Alter Boy, which we will get to in a second. Decapitator is a distortion plugin, pretty much, which allows you to add some drive to your sound. It has five different styles. I usually stick to A and E. Um, a makes the sound a little bit warmer, uh, lighter, brighter, and E makes it a little bit darker. And you can also change the tone right there. It's easy to overdo it with this plugin, so be careful when using it. I usually like to um, turn the drive up not all the way or not too high, but if I do, I like to turn down the mix a little bit. I also like this when I'm using some really electronic sounds and I just want to distort the hell out of them. This works pretty nice too. Next up is Little Alter Boy, which is a form and shifting plugin. You can adjust the pitch and the formants. You have different modes, quantize, robot, robot and transpose. And then you can add some drive and change the mix. I usually like to stick to form and shifting. I think this sounds really nice and I used it on one of my latest songs, which is not out yet, but it will be out somewhere next year. I'm gonna play you a small snip snippet of that song in which you can hear Little Alter Boy on the vocals. You first hear my vocals pitched down, which is done by automating the formant, 
and then to the second part of the verse, the foreman shift goes up and you can hear my voice, voice normally. And then I have two plugins left. Obviously there is much more plugins that I used and there is much more plugins that I love to use, but this video is not infinitely long. If you want to see more videos about plugins, you can check out my free plugin Friday series and my videos about other plugins that released. I have tutorials about all of them and you can check them out. Most of them are free. So the first plugin that I want to show you is Span. And you have probably seen this plug plugin everywhere on YouTube. It's very popular. A lot of producers use this, but I like to configure this in a very specific way. So I have this preset uh, in a session bank, mid-side stereo. As you can see, there is two different frequency spectrum curves. The green one, which you can change the color of, by the way. I like to change it to blue because it looks good. And then the orange one. And this basically indicates my mid frequencies and my side frequencies. So my mono frequencies and stereo frequencies. And especially when I'm mixing, I like to throw this on the master to see if I have anything that's a little bit weird. Often when you have a lot of stereo frequencies on the sides and not in the mids, your mix is not going to sound well on a mono speaker. If you're making some acoustic music or orchestral music and you have a lot of things panned all the way, this is not really gonna make a difference because that music is not really meant to be listened to on a mono speaker. But if you make electronic music like me, for example, which is often played on a speaker like this, a JBL Charge or a JBL Flip, those are mono speakers, if you didn't know. So when I first started making music and I made some dance tracks, they didn't really sound good on speakers like that, like that because my sides were all over the place. And also when I was checking my correlation meter, the correlation meter pretty much indicates the phase of the sound source that is going into the plugin. If it's completely at the right of this plugin, that means the sound is in mono. So let's quickly demonstrate this by making this pad mono. And this video is getting a bit long, but that doesn't matter. You can see. It's mono, so it's all the way to the right. If it is in stereo, so if there is a lot of left and right channels, it will be in the center. And if it is out of phase, it will go to the left, to the negative side. So you pretty much want to avoid this being there. And as you can see, it's already going from left to right, which is not really ideal. And you can, and you could hear if I put it in mono, it sounds a bit weird. So what I like to do in that case is I like to throw on an EQ8, and I like to set it to mid side. And what I like to do is I like to bring down some of the mid, uh, some of the side frequencies. So I'm gonna bring down some of the side frequencies in the low frequency range, like around 160 hertz and lower. And you can see right there, around 400 to 600 hertz, there are some frequencies that I want to be a little bit less as well. So right there, and you're gonna see a difference in the correlation meter and on the spectrum. You see. And now instead of going left to right from negative to positive, it's going left to right from 0 to 1, which means that it is stereo and it is not out of phase. Now I'm doing this quickly, but if you take your time to fine tune this, you can really make it sound really nice. And let's quickly get to the last plugin, which is a plugin I like to use for mastering my songs, which is Julian Loudness Meter 2. I'm using the free version, but honestly I'm thinking about getting the pro version, because that way you can simply load in your files, your audio files, and check the entire song at once. Now if I want to check my entire song, I have to analyze it first by playing the entire song. So when I'm mastering for Spotify, for example, you want to aim for minus 14 LUFS and minus 1 dB true peak. Sometimes I like to make my music louder, like for example, all the people which you heard a snippet of before is way louder because it's a dance track, it's meant for in the club. A lot of club music is way louder than minus 14 LUFS, more like minus 11 to minus 9. And also while you're a graph forming and if there's any spikes or something you can see that as well i've been recording for 30 minutes now i wish you an amazing 2022 an amazing healthy year with lots of opportunities lots of nice th nice things to do thank you guys so much for watching thank you for supporting my channel i really really appreciate every single one of you thank you so much have a nice holiday have a nice year stay creative my name is matt flank peace out Jeez, my voice is dead